I was about to hop into a taxi at the airport when my husband stopped me. Wow, hold up. Don't you get in? I will head to the hotel alone. I wasn't able to grasp the meaning of what he said while he was standing in front of the door blocking my way. What are you saying? We are going there together. It's a trip for us, remember? I never planned to travel with you. Excuse me? You've been moody at home lately, nagging about chores, you know. This is a consequence of that. I'm gonna enjoy this trip along. Then, the taxi driver asked if we were getting in. Oh yeah, only me. You either go back or get another hotel. Bye. He hopped into the taxi alone, flashing me a smirk through the window. I hit my limit at that moment. After making me do all the prep for this trip, is he seriously planning to ditch me at the airport pickup? I beat down my anger and just said, Got it. He closed the window, looking like he was about to burst out laughing. Then, the taxi sped away. An hour later, he was blowing up my phone with calls. I'm not Lee, 32. I've always loved drawing, and I work as an illustrator from home. The characters I created have become famous, and even have some merchandise out there. I've got tens of thousands of followers on social media who love my illustrations. A famous influencer has endorsed my characters, saying she loves them, which has boosted my popularity more. Work has been fulfilling and fun for me. I lost track of time, and when I realized I was suddenly 30, a friend from university was worried about me only working and not playing the field, and set me up with someone. It was David, my future husband. He was your average office worker at a medium-sized company. He had a great smile, and I instantly took a liking to him. He was interested in my work, and after casually meeting up a few times, we started seriously dating. In between our busy work schedules, we managed to make time for ourselves, and after a year and a half, he popped the question. Will you marry me? What? Seriously? I'm so happy right now. Honestly, I thought the proposal was still a bit farther off, so I was genuinely surprised, but thrilled. But listen, I love work. I want to keep working the same as now, even after we are married. He gave me a soft smile and replied, Of course. You shine when you are working hard. Stay just the way you are. Thanks, huh? And just like that, we were engaged. We went through the whole meet the family thing, with no major issues in between, and we tied the knot. We rented an apartment near his workplace and started our newlywed life. The first month or so was all honeymoon vibes and a lot of fun. But slowly, I started feeling a bit frustrated. He never did any housework. Like one day, he got up after me and started eating the breakfast I made. Hey, can you make me a coffee? Just black is fine. He asked me, keeping his eyes on the newspapers he was reading. So I made him one and then tidied up the laundry. He didn't even show a slight gesture of helping me and disappeared into the bathroom, leaving his dishes on the table. In the meantime, I finished up the laundry and cleaned up breakfast for the both of us. After that, I started working from home. He too headed out to the office. I didn't work fixed hours like a regular office worker, often working late into the night. David normally finished work before me, but he just lounged around on the couch when he got home. Hey, hum, hurry up and make dinner. I'm starving. He demanded right when I paused my work. 
I was irritated, but quickly whipped up something. He sat there, scrolling through his phone in silence while eating dinner. Hey, can't you put the phone away while we are eating? Let's have conversations like normal humans. Ah, uh, what's your problem? Even when I tried to talk to him, he kept playing with it and eating at the same time. After he finished, he just left his dishes and headed straight to the shower. I was left cleaning up while he just watched TV and gulped beer. Before I finished all the chores, he already headed to the bedroom. It went on for months, and I was just piling up stress. At first, I thought, as a wife, I had to make sure things were in order and try to make it work. But I reached my limit with him, not lifting a finger no matter how many times I asked. So one day, I decided to talk to him about it. Honey, I want to talk about splitting up the chores. Right now, I'm doing everything. Can you lend a hand once in a while? He looked truly surprised by my request. Um, splitting chores? You want me to do chores? Yeah, can you at least help out a bit? What are you talking about? Isn't housework the wife's job after marriage? I've never heard of husbands doing it. He said it with a straight face, stuck in some bygone era. That's so old school. Times have changed, you know. I work too. And if we are both working, it's only fair we share chores. But my mom been doing everything at home. She's a stay-at-home mom, right? Times and situations are different now. Besides, you said it was okay for me to keep working, right? So you should help out with housework too. He gave me an evil look. There is no relation between working and doing housework. Anyway, that's a woman's job. And you are home all day, right? Yeah, I'm working from home. Whatever. I'm not doing it. It's not a man's job. Stop being so old school. Forget it. I'm telling you I'm not doing it. You will take care of me like you always do. Got it? And with that, he stormed off to take a shower. I was at a loss. Around that time, I got the news that my book was getting published, making me even busier. Realizing I couldn't handle all the chores, I talked to my friend Kylie, who suggested using a housekeeping service. They supposedly did everything from cleaning and laundry to prepping meals Thinking it was a great idea, I brought it up to David. Listen, I'm thinking of using a housekeeping service. He gave me a skeptical look. What's that? It's like... So I explained the details and cost of the service. It wasn't like we couldn't afford it with both of our incomes. I thought he'd totally be on board, but he shut it down hard. Absolutely not. Why not? I don't want strangers in our house, and it's a waste of money. Just keep doing everything like you have been. But I've got a book coming out soon, and I'm swamped. That's not relevant. Keep doing the housework perfectly. Don't you dare slack off because you're busy. He arrogantly snapped, glaring at me. I was just left speechless. Around the same time, his work got busier and started coming home later. It wasn't the case before, but suddenly he had overtime every day and even worked weekends. We hardly had any quality time together, just passing each other by. In the midst of all this, I still had to keep the house spotless. The stress from work and everyday life started giving me migraines. Then one day, I was out to meet with a publisher for a change. Afterward, as I was heading to the station, Hmm? David? 
I saw his familiar figure. It was definitely my husband. My breath caught in my throat because he was with a young woman I didn't recognize. He had his arm around her, chatting away like they were close. They looked like a couple from any angle. I tried to follow them, but they were lost in the crowd, and I couldn't see them anymore. When I got home, he only texted me saying he was working late again and didn't come back. What was that all about? Was the overtime excuse a lie? And who was that woman? I was left feeling lost and confused. Maybe he was cheating. I didn't want to believe that. For a few days, I acted normal. I didn't confront him about that day, but my suspicions kept growing inside me over time. Finally, I decided to hire a private investigator to look into him. Then one day out of the blue, he gave me a suggestion. Hey, our anniversary is coming up, right? Yeah, it is. How about we go on a trip? I'm thinking of a beach resort. He looked excited talking about it, even though I hadn't gotten the result from the investigator yet. I couldn't help but be thrilled too. A trip sounds good. I could use a break too. Right? So can you organize it? Oh, and take care of the payment too. I'm paying? You earn more than me, so it's cool, right? How about the next long weekend? Got it. And just like that, I made the reservations. I managed to get us an ocean view room at the beach resort hotel, just like he wanted. He was thrilled to hear that. I forgot all about my suspicions and looked forward to the trip with him. On the day of our trip, we took a short flight to our destination. When we landed, we grabbed a taxi to go to the hotel. But then, right as I was pulling my suitcase and hailing a cab, David dropped a bomb. Whoa, hold up. You're not getting in. I will head to the hotel alone. What? Why? I wasn't able to grasp the meaning of what he said while he was standing in front of the door, blocking my way. What are you saying? We're going there together. It's a trip for us, remember? I never planned to travel with you. Excuse me? You've been moody at home lately, nagging about chores, you know. This is a consequence of that. I'm gonna enjoy this trip alone. What are you talking about? Then, the taxi driver asked if we were getting in. Oh yeah, only me. You either go back or get another hotel. See ya. He hopped into the taxi alone, flashing me a smirk through the window. I hit my limit at that moment. After making me do all the prep for this trip, is he seriously planning to ditch me at the airport pickup? I beat down my anger and just said, got it. He closed the window, looking like he was about to burst out laughing. Then the taxi sped away. I turned back toward the arrival hall when my phone rang. It was a report from the private investigator. I couldn't stop grinning as I read it. I headed into a coffee shop and made a call. Hey Natalie, you are coming to stay at my hotel today, right? Can't wait to see you. The person I called was Kylie, the friend who told me about the housekeeping service. She worked at the hotel her family ran, and we were planning to stay there. Actually, something happened. I explained the situation to her, and she was livid. Are you serious? That's outrageous. So I've got a favor to ask you. She gladly agreed to help out. About an hour after parting ways with David, my phone started blowing up with calls from him. I initially ignored it, but I got fed up with the persistent ringing and finally answered. Hello? Hey, 
What have you done? They are saying I can't check into the hotel. Oh, yeah? They said you cancel it. Looks like they've already booked someone else in. Did you cancel it out of spite? It was exactly what I expected. I had asked Kylie to make sure he wouldn't be able to stay there no matter what. It was a hotel I booked. So since I'm not going, canceling is just common sense, right? When I told him nonchalantly, he exposed with anger. Cancel the cancellation right now or book it again. Are you even listening? Right then, I got a message on WhatsApp. I checked it while still on the call, and it was a photo from Kylie. It showed him in the hotel lobby, raging on the phone with a young woman I'd seen before standing next to him. I ignored his loud protest and calmly asked, By the way, who is the woman you are trying to check in with? What? I know you are with someone. He started getting flustered, saying, Are you spying on me? I pictured him looking around with his phone, and a laugh bubbled up inside me. I'm alone. What nonsense are you spewing? Still trying to deny it? So you were planning to have me book and pay for the hotel, only to stay there with your girlfriend, right? What? No way! What are you talking about? He still denied it, so I told him calmly. Well, the woman you are with is Anna Youngs. She works at the same company as you. Um... You've been involved for a few months, and your favorite hotel seems to be a melody by I-95. He fell silent on the phone. I could practically picture him turning pale. Why would you? I had a private investigator telling you. Just got the report. Got all the details and pictures of your hotel visit. I stated matter-of-factly to him, who remained silent on the line for a while. And then he weakly muttered, It's not what you think. She's just a fling. You're my only love, and... Before he could finish, I heard a woman's voice yelling, What the heck? Followed by a loud bang. Oh, what the heck are you doing? You said you loved me, but never mind now. Can't even check into the hotel, so I'm leaving. I rolled my eyes as I listened to their chaotic exchange. So is a lover's quarrel with Anna over? I'm sorry. I'll be coming home now. So let's talk things out. Just wait for me. So I gave him a piece of my mind. There is nothing to talk about. We're getting a divorce. I would definitely demand compensation. I'm leaving the house today. So my lawyer will contact you from now on. Don't show your face to me ever again, you scumbag. I hung up and never picked up his incessant calls again. Nearly a year later, we finalized our divorce. Since I made more money than him, I wasn't able to get alimony, but secured a substantial asset division. I also had a chance to confront Anna. Although it wasn't entirely her fault, I felt better after saying what I had to say. I exposed their affair at their workplace too. Unable to bear the office gossip, Anna quit and went back to her hometown, leading to their breakup. David continued working at the headquarters for a while, but he was eventually transferred to a regional office and effectively drilled from his career path. He is now living in an unfamiliar place struggling to care for himself while living a lonely life. I don't feel an ounce of sympathy for him. If anything, I think he got what he deserved. As for me, now that I'm free from the stress after the divorce, my career is flourishing. Plus, one of my characters is getting turned into an animation. To celebrate, I'm planning another solo trip to Kylie's hotel. From now on, I will focus on my work and brighten up my life as I go along.